What I'm going to show you today is some innovations in ink tech technology that we've been working on for several years that I'm truly excited about because they bring real breakthrough capabilities. But first, I need to explain to you the challenges that are in front of inkjet. One of the challenges for inkjet is really to solve a paradox. And inkjet technologies have this problem. They have to take an ink and put it through a nozzle in an inkjet head that is about 20 microns in diameter, or about a quarter of the thickness of a human hair. They also have to hit a media, a piece of paper, coated papers, uncoated papers, foil stones, <coughs> and give you the bright, vibrant image quality that you want by sticking onto the paper and not soaking through or not soaking into the paper and spreading. They require extensive drying systems or solvent recovery systems to remove the water uh, from, the, from the paper. Uh, inkjet inks, the water-based inkjet inks are about 90% water. We took those challenges and turned that around to see the opportunity in it. Can we create an inkjet system that breaks that paradox, the paradox between an ink, which is thin enough to eject from a nozzle, but thick enough to give you the performance on media that you want and not soak through or spray. And the answer to that, we believe, is yes. And to take that ability to have an ink that is a liquid in the head, but thick, on, but viscous and stiff on the paper to not, to not soak through and create that. And that is, in fact, what we have done. And I'm going to describe that ink to you in a couple of steps. And the first is that we call it a gel ink. And it's a gel ink because at room temperature, it's a gel. Again, about the consistency of toothpaste or peanut butter. We elevate it in temperature, and it becomes very thin, able to eject through a nozzle. And what that means is, like we showed you with solid ink, the color stays where you want it. And what you see is those drops of ink being formed and hitting the substrate. And in this case, this is actually a metal foil, and those drops hit and stay. If you did this with traditional inkjet inks, that drop will move all over that surface. We need an ink that not only is thin enough to go through the head, but has the properties you want on the media to knock so through, it's got to be robust. The curing phase <coughs> takes ultraviolet energy. We shine that on that gel ink on the media, and it causes a chemical reaction to harden that ink. It becomes very hard, a very thin, hard layer that stands up to significant abuse. And you're going to see some examples now in the, of this video. So here you see on paper. Next you're going to see this image again, the gel ink, now transparent films. Again, the ink goes where it's supposed to be and stays there. Next you'll see it on aluminum films. The next set of innovations I'm going to show you is a set of modular inkjet head technologies. It's a three inch wide head. We used extensive computer simulation, computer aided engineering to make sure that this head is capable, first of all, of printing those inks that I spoke about, operating at the elevated temperature, because that's what's going to give the breakthrough to the printers that we need to get. And beyond that, that in fact, those heads are reliable and robust. What is the difference between your uh, solid inkjet ink and OC's uh, crystal point ink, which is also a uh, solid inkjet ink? The first thing that I'd say is I think it, you know, it is, as you say, in many ways, a validation of our, of our strategy, of the point I've been making today, of, of really having an ink that is liquid in the head, but viscous on the, on, on the paper. In terms of, so I think there's a lot of fundamental similarities. Um, and when we look at the patents, and if I listen to what they say, I think there are potentially some, you know, some differences. Uh, they have a, uh, they talk about a very matte finish. Um, uh, we we achieve a little more gloss. The chemical composition is, you know, different in, in, in some ways. We have some patents that people need to work around. Steve, I have a question for you. We've seen uh, at the show modular heads um, built together to widths beyond 20 inches. And you've talked about up to 20 inches as the, the, the range for this heads. Can you talk about difficulties of going beyond that? I, I was trying to be very clear about what we've experimented with to date, 20 inches. I think it's scalable beyond that. That the reality is once you learn how to scale two or three of these together and manage the complexity of how do I get the color balance right, how do I physically arrange those, 
that it's really not that much challenging to go broader. It's going to be about which are the right products for the market.